So today, we're going to be talking about everything I hate about the mic. Oh. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. All right, guys, so this is my first YouTube video, and honestly, one of the hardest things that I've come to realize is what kind of YouTuber am I? What kind of cinematographer am I? And I'm sure that you guys watching it kind of are all in the same boat, but with the help of one of my good friends who told me just to be yourself, kind of seems like the best advice. So let's see if I could do that with the start of my very first YouTube video, everything wrong with the Micro Four Thirds system. Now I'm not here to talk crap about Micro Four Thirds. I'm currently using two different MFT systems myself. I love them for what they do. In today's age, you really can't complain. If you're one of those who's asking, what the heck is Micro Four Thirds and why should I care? Well, let me explain. Micro Four Thirds was a new camera format developed back in 2008 for the mirrorless camera systems. At the time, mirrorless was fairly new and with only two true consumer mirrorless cameras on the market. The first coming in 2004 by Epson, yes, the printer company. The Epson RD1 coming in at $3,000 and then Leica M8 in 2006 for $5,500. Yes, I know, pretty pricey for pre-2008, which is why when Panasonic released the first Micro Four Thirds mirrorless camera for only $800, it got the world to notice. Thus, a whole generation of cameras were created. The Micro Four Thirds mount was here to stay. The mirrorless cameras made it possible to get that cinematic look at an affordable price. If you're wondering why you should care, well, it's because the introduction of this camera introduced a cheaper and smaller camera format. It was possible for other camera developers to take that layout and improve upon it. It's one of the main reasons why we have amazing, small, lightweight 4K cameras today. There is no difference in sharpness when it comes to lenses, and the camera body can do more or less what any other camera body can do. But there are at least two things that struck me as odd when I first did my research, so I wanted to share it. Micro Four Thirds definitely has its advantages, but that's not what this video is about. This video is for those who are considering a Micro Four Thirds system for their first time or their next camera and would want to know what certain obstacles that they'd come up with when purchasing this format. Unless you're switching to another Micro Four Thirds body, the number one problem to know about Micro Four Thirds systems is that you cannot, or better yet, should not use these lenses on camera bodies with larger sensors. Outside of a handful of old school lens mounts like the C-mount which came in 1926, Micro Four Thirds is pretty much as small as you're going to get sensor-wise, with minor variations in between. If you did somehow find an adapter to put it on, let's say, a full-frame Sony, then you will get vignetting, dark circles around your lens that, unless you're looking for this style, it's not going to look good in the long run. Plus, Micro Four Thirds mount flanges back distance is smaller than most other mount types. The image would project too far away and you won't be able to get focus on all focal lengths. But there is some good news that comes out of this. You can use larger sensor lenses like Sony, Nikon, or Canon on your Micro Four Thirds body. But we'll get more into that a little later. But the important thing here regarding lenses is that you can go down, but you can't go up. The number two problem with Micro Four Thirds lenses is that the focal lengths aren't exactly accurate. I don't know why they don't change this, it must be some traditional thing, but what do I mean by this? Each lens has a focal length etched on the side. Each focal length is based on a full frame sensor. Smaller sensors like Micro Four Thirds do not meet that focal length measurement because of the smaller sensor. Because the sensor is so small, it only shows you a piece of what a full frame sensor can show you, making the MFT camera look extremely zoomed in. Let's use another analogy. Let's take this Olympus 12 to 40 lens, an amazing Micro Four Thirds lens. It's not actually going to give you the same look as a full frame 12 to 40 lens though. If you want to compare these lenses to full frame lenses, then you pretty much have to double your focal length. If you're side by side with a full frame and you want the same image, then your 12 to 40 mil is actually a 24 to 80 mil. Still not a bad lens, but if you're really into wide shots, this is something to consider. Let's take a Super 35 sensor camera. Here I have the Blackmagic 4K versus the 6K. The lenses are 12 to 40 versus 18 to 35. Two completely different sensors, two completely different lenses. Let's see what 18 millimeters looks like. And here's 35 mil. Not exactly double the frame rate size as a full frame, but you get the picture. The point is, you're going to have to adjust. But don't let this scare you. It is possible to achieve a full frame look. What matters here is how far you'll have to be from the subject 
or what actual frame you're looking for. There is no one tool for every job and no one ever sticks with just one lens. And like I mentioned earlier, you can adopt other lenses to your Micro Four Thirds mount. You'll need an adapter, preferably Metabones, anything else, you're just gonna be wasting your money. But if you're keeping track of the price point here, Blackmagic Pocket 4K is still around $1,300, plus a Metabone Speed Booster being around $600, you're now at the price point of a Blackmagic Pocket 6K. And for $100 more, maybe it might be worth springing for that 6K sensor. But remember, that's only if you have Canon EF lenses to go with it. But for me, I don't need the fancy things. I like my native lenses. All that matters is what you create with it. So let's get started. And also, just a quick heads up, for this video, all the audio was recorded on this knockoff Rode Wireless Go Socani. So if you couldn't tell or the audio didn't bother you, consider checking them out. I'll put the link down in the description below. Next week, I'll be doing a video on these versus the Rode Mic Go Wireless 2. So it should be quite a battle. You don't want to miss it. If you're still here, hope you liked this video. Hopefully it was helpful. This is my first YouTube video. It is kind of weird, a little nervous, but I look forward to creating more for you all. And if you can share and um, 